Hey everybody, this is Sean from Shooty School, and it's Metal Mod at ToonTrack.com. Today, we're continuing where we left off last episode with creating a metal-themed song from scratch in this ToonTrack-sponsored series. Thank you so much, ToonTrack. You may want to watch the first episode first. The link is in the description, and let's rock and roll! The last thing we discussed was how I wrote guitar riffs by listening to Easy Drummer's drum beats and just being inspired by them and riffing to them. Today will be the exact opposite, which is finding the right beat for my already written guitar riffs. Check out Easy Drummer at ToonTrack.com. I got the product page linked just below. Now I'm not going to go into the specifics about song structures in this series. I have a complete separate series on Easy Drummer Song Creator which goes into detail about song structures. The link is below. For now, just know that what you see on screen is a generic and typical song structure. And in my opinion, this is not a bad thing depending on the market you're writing for. And with this image as a reference, you can see me laying out markers in my DAW and copying my guitar parts to the correct song structure locations. A fantastic pre-production workflow. So if you put this labor in up front like I am now, you can have an uninterrupted and creative groove sorting session afterwards. Let's first start with Bandmate though, but only briefly because I have a full series of videos on Bandmate as well, the links are below. Now I could just export the clean direct guitar audio of each individual riff into a folder on my computer. I'll put it on my desktop for the moment. And after I select the Bandmate tab in Easy Drummer, I can simply drag one of my riffs in. Bandmate will detect my tempo or give me options in case it doesn't detect my tempo accurately. And now Bandmate simply searches through your Grooves tab MIDI collection automatically and tries to predict which beat may work best for your riff. Or Bandmate's AI might simply just create a beat from scratch. Poof! Here's a new beat for your riff. It's pretty cool. Just hit play. Simply select a genre and audition beats. If you find something you like, you can manipulate the play style here. Notice the kick drum is syncopating with my right hand's performance. If I'm happy with the beat, I can drag it to the song track to continue working with it, or to my user MIDI folder to save it for later. I'll even rename the beat. Onwards, I've written and arranged my riffs. Let's let Easy Drummer do some of the heavy lifting now. In this case, I want to audition entire MIDI songs and not use Bandmade, so I hear every possible beat in a theme that I'm interested in. Here's my most productive workflow. I will engage the loop button in my DAW. I will bring up Easy Drummer and maximize it as much as possible without covering my DAW's markers or its timeline, so I can navigate and set loop points in my DAW without having to close Easy Drummer. I will set a loop around my first riff by simply referencing my DAW markers like this. And now I hear my pre-verse looping. Now I can simply click play on any groove in my Grooves tab and it will automatically sync to my looped DAW riff regardless of where in the measure my DAW is playing. It's an absolutely fantastic feature. This is the money. Even though you may be writing a metal song, that doesn't mean you should limit yourself to the metal folder. Check out some of these alt-rock grooves I stumbled upon. They're absolutely fantastic for this. In the last episode of the series, I was working in the heavy song, which had a recommended tempo of 90 BPMs. It turns out that I like this song better at 135 and want to audition these grooves first. Keep one thing in mind if you do the same thing. If a drummer plays a really fast fill at 90 BPMs or does some really interesting hits, they may not feel natural at a higher tempo like 135, like this. That's okay though in a lot of cases, since Easy Drummer has the tools to produce and tame these types of problems when needed. So when I'm not 100% satisfied with a groove, you'll notice that I will still choose it for its foundational elements and will just tweak it later on.
As I search for grooves, I'm going to discuss my thoughts on the riffs I wrote in case any amateurs have writer's block or are looking for any inspiration. Here's some analogies. I'll hit play in my DAW to start my pre-verse guitar loop and hit play on a groove in my grooves tab in Easy Drummer. This riff has a long single note slide like what you might hear from Metallica's shortest straw. Except I'm imagining a more stompy backbeat behind it, which might give it a more pop metal style. Also, Dave Mustaine of Megadeth always had a way with jamming nasty sounding major chords into his riffing, which is where the turnaround of this riff was inspired from. And here's a solid backbeat based part that I think gets my head bobbing well to the quarter note. I could favorite this beat, or drag it to my user MIDI folder so I can find it later. But my workflow today will be dragging it to the song track, right clicking and going to song part. And since I don't see preverse as an option, I'll just click on the manage user song parts. I'll type the name I want, which is preverse in this case and choose a color. It doesn't hurt to get used to these song part colors up here, because in Easy Keys, Easy Bass, and Superior Drummer, all of these song parts are the same colors in these programs with few exceptions. And the reason I'm labeling these grooves with the correct song part now is so I can see my structure at a glance. We can see in my DAW the preverse is at measures 7 through 15. So I'll simply drag my new beat to measure 7 in the song track. Now we can just whip through this entire song with this method. I'll set a new loop point and hit play on my next riff. The verse riff is where we bring the dynamics down so we can later build them back up and create tension in the song structure. This riff vaguely reminds me of Bon Jovi's Dead or Alive with the high descending arpeggios except I'm doing it at the complete opposite end of the neck. And I don't want the bass guitar to just clone what the guitar is playing. With this guitar riff being more melodic and halftime feel, it can offer opportunities for the vocals or bass guitar to pop out a bit with their own melodies, which we'll get into later with Easy Bass. Here's a good halftime feel groove. I'll drag it to the song track, right click and label it verse. The pre-chorus riff was directly inspired by the Metallica Orion riff. My first measure is almost identical to it, except it's in a different key, so maybe we'll produce that riff a little bit more later. Again, major and minor chords instead of power chords are in this riff to give character. And I want a snare starting on the downbeat, which should build yet more tension to be released in the chorus to come. I'll take this groove, which really drives the song towards the next section. The chorus riff, which in most cases should be the biggest hook in your song. This is where the tension that has been previously built is resolved. Or, as a different metaphor, where your head bob should feel the most weight. I started off with four attention drawing power chords and octave up on the neck. Possibly something that might get stuck in someone's head, hopefully. It's also typical to put the power hand of the drum beat on a cymbal to emphasize resolution and power. So I don't want a complicated beat, I just need my head to bob with more weight. This beat should do. I'll drag it down, label it. Now if we look at our song track, we see one complete song revolution here. I'll simply drag a selection around it, right click, select copy, I'll place my playhead at measure 39 and select paste. Now according to my song structure, I've completed the first two song revolutions. And as for the bridge section, if you watch the first episode in this series, a drum beat from the Easy Drummer 3 MIDI library inspired the rhythm of my riff. I stored that beat in my user MIDI folder if you remember. Now bridges are usually about contrast, and since this section sounds way different than any other section, it acts as an appropriate interlude for this song. 
I'll simply drag it out. Now about the riff, the notes that are higher up on the neck are what I call the Slayer Interval, which is called a flat five. A flat five used to be frowned upon when played at church. Also, a lot of blues players enjoy this interval as well, it's in the blues scale. Later on in the bridge, there is a power chord variation as the bridge section progresses to push even harder and bring more suspense. And lastly, remember the last thing that we copied? It was the first revolution of our song. It's still in the memory, the clipboard. So I'll simply select measure 87. I'll put the playhead there and select paste. And we just finished laying out our song structure. When you pay attention to song structures and understand what you're going for, you'll be laying them out this quickly sooner than later. So stick with it. This is good stuff. Me writing and producing a full song in four YouTube episodes, it's a tall order. And since deadlines are a challenge for many of us songwriters, let's do a simple trick for the intro of this song. If your opening riff is noteworthy, which most first impressions should be, let's create a new guitar track and copy the pre-verse to the beginning of our song as the new intro. We'll pan that track up the middle and loop it. I'll simply open up Easy Mix, which there's a free trial of at ToonTrack.com, and select a tone that is either heavy on creative effects like this, or maybe even the opposite of that, a tone that has very little gain. So when the band kicks in, it will sound that much heavier when the original guitar tones come in. A last typical trick is I'll just re-record this intro part and add a sustaining bend for suspense, which should line the band up to hit harder when it comes in. That intro works and it was quick to put together. Now before I go, a question and comment to beginner songwriters. When I was discussing the riffs I wrote, what did you think of my influences like Metallica, Dave Mustang, Bon Jovi, pop metal, major chords, or the blues scale? What'd you think of those? Now, whether you like those things or not, try not to let your favorite bands that you know so well be your number one influence when writing. Trust me, they are in your playing no matter what, they're your favorite bands. Pull from classic influences and reinvent them or from completely different genres of music so you start creating your own thing. And if you remember my pre-verse, the Metallica Orion riff that I literally ripped off, if you have a moment where you're getting stuck and losing your momentum, just throw a filler riff like that in your song and keep going. When you have a situation where you use a filler riff like I did, revisit it later when you have the correct inspiration and conviction. It's easier to take care of those things after you've completed your song. At that point, you might better understand what that one missing puzzle piece is. So we just finished the first draft of the entire song. All the building blocks are rock solid and they're in the right place. So when Easy Bass provides air support for us in the next episode, it will lay down a barrage of brutal bass riffs. It'll be fantastic. Check the link in the description for the link to the next episode. Thank you, subs. Thank you, Tune Track, And thank you, whoever the heck you are, for making it this far in the series. Visit my free social media sites for support and to hang out with like-minded individuals. And you shall rock on!